This amp has been cooking for at least a year since it was announced last summer in July. Let's see just what the MC351 can offer. Simply put, this is a 2.1 channel speaker amp and DAC, and at a glance it appears to be one of their more versatile combo amps. So I ask myself, is this the modern alternative for home theater AV receivers? Immediately I get the feeling that this is something designed for simplicity in the living room. Fuzzy Audio continues with their theme of adding orange accents, which also serve as an intuitive visual aid. There should be no doubt that the main human interface is the shiny orange knob. On an amplifier of this size, I would have liked to see a larger knob, especially considering how much resistance this potentiometer gives. The bass and treble knobs are big enough for their purpose, but once again are irritatingly backwards. Bass should be on the left, and treble on the right. This is one area that Fuzzy Audio has been very inconsistent with, and I hope they can fully correct this for all future models. Staying on the theme of things that don't quite make sense, the VU meter, while it is a welcome aesthetic addition, has little functional purpose other than aesthetics. Of course I'm being reductive as it does serve as a means to help prevent clipping, but without a proper pair of stereo VU meters, it is not as accurate or as useful as it could be. At least it glows. Then beside the single VU meter, is the mode button, which cycles through all inputs. This button has satisfying tactile feedback and sound, which gives some confidence in its build quality. In order, the inputs cycle from bottom to top, USB, optical, coaxial, RCA, and Bluetooth. Under the device are four small rubber feet, which do a decent job of keeping it in place while the mode selector is being pushed or volume is being adjusted, and at 1.07 kilos, the MC351 feels neither heavy or light for its size. On the back, things get a bit more busy. From top to bottom, left to right, we have a pre-out, Bluetooth antenna, RCA and coaxial inputs, optical input and USB. Then the passive speaker and subwoofer outputs and the power socket. Provided with the MC351 was a 32 volt power brick. The same one that I found supplied with the BT-20A Pro. The orange volume knob doubles up as a power on switch, which is fine in principle, but at the very lowest volume, just before switching on and off, something can disengage inside the amplifier. For the user, it's not realistically a problem, but it doesn't give me the feeling that every little kink was ironed out of this device before release. There is a very tiny fraction of adjustment that can toggle this internal switch very quickly, and I feel like its actuation should have been further along anti-clockwise, along with the off state. Treble and bass tone controls do a fair job, but from what I could hear, switching between the MC351 and the BT-20A Pro, the MC351 doesn't have quite as much total sway as the tone controls on the BT-20A Pro. I don't personally consider this a deal breaker, as I think there is still more than enough tone control for most speakers. Mode switching feels a little slow, but it's also fairly typical for a non-analog switching method. I remain spoiled by the speed and immediacy of analog controls. Regarding the USB input, the DAC portion of the MC351 will always be active when the amp portion is turned off, as long as the USB is hooked up to a PC that's turned on. This is something to note if you plan to use it at your PC with the USB input, you will need to switch devices manually if you are using another DAC or DAC amp combo for your headphones. Personally, I would recommend using a line out from your headphone DAC to the MC351 RCA inputs for a more user-friendly experience. The MC351 DAC allows playback up to 24-bit at 96,000 Hz, which is the same as what the Fuzzy Audio K5 Pro offers. In my opinion, Fuzzy Audio gets a passing grade on almost all aspects of features and functionality, aside from the pre-out. I had the exact same complaint with the BT-20A Pro, and I'm disappointed to see it has still not been corrected. 
No matter what strength line signal you provide the MC351 with, it will always be reduced to an extremely weak signal out of this port. What's worse is that the pre-out is once again mislabeled as it does not behave like a pre-out with a fixed signal but behaves like an auxiliary out. The whole point of a pre-out is to act as an uncontaminated pass-through for the pre-out signal from the source or DAC, be it analog or digital. The volume of the MC351 pre-out is however completely determined by the volume control and it barely reaches usable volumes as a line level signal until you reach about 80%, at which point my loudspeakers would be causing me permanent hearing damage and disturbing my neighbors two blocks away. And finally, while the pre-out volume can be a little higher from analog sources than that of the onboard USB input, for example, it still remains quiet. Please, Fuzzy Audio, your future amps need to have a proper, high-powered, fixed volume pass-through line level pre-out. As it is, this is unusable with my powered subwoofer and is mislabeled. This brings me nicely onto a slightly more curious point. Who is using passive subwoofers? Sure, it's nice to have the option to power a set of speakers with a subwoofer, but some people also mix and match hardware. So without a separate volume control for the subwoofer output, there's no guarantee that the sensitivity of the stereo speakers matches the passive sub. So this slightly less common feature is also only useful for matched sets of speakers. It's difficult to describe this as an oversight as it's already leaning more into niche territory away from the typical consumer ecosystem, but that's still one less notch in the tally. For this part of the review, my impressions are from using the amplifier with USB, Bluetooth and RCA inputs. I was not able to test the optical or coaxial inputs. I also don't have any fancy microphones or any good way to reproduce data on the tone controls or if the amplifier imparts its own tonal character on the speakers, so my following impressions are all subjective and anecdotal. On the whole, I was not disappointed, but neither was I particularly impressed. Going back and forth between this and the BT28 Pro, I felt like I got slightly more energetic and articulate performance from the smaller but more powerful BT20A Pro unit. Of course, it could also be that the BT20A Pro puts out a more neutral sound with tone controls in the default position, because remedying the mid-centric sound with the tone controls of the MC351 did help improve this perceived lack of dynamics and attack. But even after those improvements, I still couldn't help feeling that the sound didn't have as much immediacy and control or as though it felt slower and smoothed over. Of course, I'm nitpicking some very fine differences that could make even less of a difference in a multimedia setup that also might be preferred by some people looking for an amplifier with a more analog presentation. Ultimately, I couldn't help feeling like the MC351 is a jack of all trades and a master of none, and as such would be best implemented in a multimedia setup where it can be best put to use with its multiple inputs, unlike a critical listening environment where I would personally opt for the smaller, simpler, and more powerful BT20A Pro. With that said, a product that is aimed squarely at the all-in-one segment, it is also missing one crucial feature, a remote control. I'm at a bit of a loss because I personally consider this quite a big oversight given that it is otherwise also not perfect in other regards, I can't bring myself to fully recommend this product. Of course, within this specific product segment, I'm sure there are those who would be interested in this type of amplifier anyway. Let me know in the comments if you think I've missed something. Maybe there are some specific use cases I haven't quite thought of yet. After all, it boasts far more power than typical home theater AV receivers of similar or equal value and has just about enough features to get by in most situations with a focus on stereo sound in a much smaller, less power consuming package. Now for a quick shameless plug, the best way you can support this channel is to purchase products through the affiliate links down in the description. That's it for now. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.